Our political insiders are here, and you can join the conversation on Twitter at Harris Faulkner, at FN Insiders, hashtag FRW for Fox Report Weekend. Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter, joining us via satellite from beautiful Charleston, South Carolina tonight. Doug Schoen, a former pollster for President Bill Clinton. Ed Rollins is in the house. Pleasure. Former White House political director and deputy chief of staff to President Reagan. All are Fox News contributors. It is Sunday. You know it is because it's Fox News political insiders. Do we need a select committee? I think we probably do to get at the facts. And I think that's the key issue. How do we get at the facts? I think this committee with subpoena power is probably a step in the right direction. I say regrettably because I think all Americans would like to move on. We can't till we learn the facts. Uh, Ed, tell me about this select committee and, and what happens if, in fact, it's not bipartisan. Is that important? I, I wish the Democrats would participate, and I would think they would want to participate. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's been four or five hearings on the Hill, as the speaker said. The problem is nobody knows what came out of each one of those hearings. They're all different, all different facts. I think it's important for the one story to be told and bring those people together, get all the facts, put a document forward. We owe it to this ambassador who was murdered and the three other Americans who were murdered. Pat, why would Democrats like Adam Schiff tell their political party members to boycott a bipartisan committee to get to the bottom of a night that our U.S. consulate was attacked in a foreign country? Well, you know, I have been advocating since day one that there should be a select committee because it was the only way to get consistent questioning. And as Ed said, to put everything under one house on this. It's sad. I, I look at Adam Schiff, I watch him, and I'm going... You know, it's hard for me to remember the Watergate. There were Republicans who were willing to stand up against the president or at least ask for the truth mm -hmm. and treat hearings seriously. That's how bad our politics has become. The truth is we know that we were not told the truth. We don't know what the president was doing that night, except he was not in the Situation Room. And we know that the talking points were a fantasy imposed. But I, I have to tell you, my frustration with the press and all of this, and we'll get to this in a moment, but is really great about Ben Rhodes. But I want to go back to about the hearings. The Republicans have a real challenge. They need to run this, particularly if the Democrats don't participate. They need to run this, and even if they do, not as a political show, which is the, what they normally do, but as a fact-finding, uncover the facts, one, two, three, and build the case of what we were not told and what really happened that night and what happened afterwards. If they do that and the Democrats don't participate, then the Democrats will be hurt. If they don't and the Republicans put on a political show, people will say, there you go, that's what we expect. It, mm -hmm. it, it behooves them all to act like American leaders instead of a bunch of hacks. Uh, Secretary Kerry has now been subpoenaed by the oversight, the House Oversight Committee. So the question now is, well, he wasn't on duty at the time. So right. what can he tell? You know, I don't know. I think he owes it to the American people, certainly to the uh, committee. To do to, what? To tell everything he does know and everything that the State Department might well have that has not yet been disclosed, as Pat and Ed were suggesting. But I tend to agree with the premise of your question, Harris, which is the bulk of the fact-finding will come from the select committee that has a lot of work to do. The, the, the bottom line here, if, if this memo or email that had been subpoenaed, all the documents were supposedly subpoenaed, had been, for, uh, been put forth months ago, uh, we wouldn't be having this discussion. But clearly they hid this document. They decided this document was a political document. And it's, it's, so we want to know what else is out there. In the fog of, of war sometimes, this was in the fog of a campaign. What didn't get told to the American public? And I think Secretary Kerry owes it to his Foreign Service. Again, it was Foreign Service officer and an ambassador who was killed. We, need, we have an obligation to find the facts, make sure it doesn't happen again. You well, know what's interesting is uh, you hear, Pat, uh, some of the Democrats coming forward now and saying, well, you know, we know all that we need to know on this. You're not going to know anything else. This is a colossal waste of time, so on and so forth. It makes you question a little bit what kind of impact this could have on first the midterm elections and whether or not this would come up. But really, for the presidential election in 2016, because Hillary Clinton, unlike Secretary Kerry, was actually on the job that night. That's right. And was there afterwards promoting the story about the false story about the video. Look, this is the biggest cover-up in Washington uh, <clears throat> since Watergate. And the, sadly, 
some of the things that haven't happened, Bob Woodward and the rest of the national press, which have basically taken a walk on this to protect the Obama administration. Only Fox has pursued this in a few other outlets. Seriously, I've said from the beginning, it would never go away. This argument that we've heard all of this, there's nothing new, is not true. And as Ed pointed out, that document was covered up on purpose. It was covered up because the president was going to a fundraiser and endangered his campaign. And let me just say this, and I say this about the press and including our own, uh, even here. Ben Rhodes did not work in a vacuum. He worked for Tom Donlan, the national security advisor, former political hack who was running the national security uh, agents, uh, uh, council. And I've said this over and over, that's where you're going to get to. He was the person designing and running this. And anyone who knows him and knows the players, just like if you knew the Nixon White House and the players you would know, and that's the truth we need to get at. Uh, part of that kind of soundbite timeline that we put together moments ago that we all got to watch, uh, former White House staffer Tommy Vitor was saying, you know, all we all bureaucrats do all day long is, is edit <clears throat> um, talking points. And we've got ASZ on Twitter, uh, Adam, who says, well, if that's what bureaucrats are doing all day long, we have blank too many of them. <laughs> well, we may have too many of them. That's another discussion for another night. But here's what we do know, and Pat and Ed will certainly weigh in. We've all been in the White House. We've all worked at a high level for Democratic and Republican presidents. And we all have been involved in editing talking points. And when you're involved in a big matter like this, Harris, let me assure you, you remember what you do, you remember the words you pick, and you remember the process. I don't think I'm uh, interpolating too much to say Tommy Veter is not necessarily telling what I believe to be the full truth. Well, they made a deliberate decision not to release this document because the, there's two paragraphs in there that basically are all po about politics. And this is this is, National Security Council is not supposed to be about politics. It's supposed to be about governing and about national security. And I think there's another part of this that needs to be told. We spend billions and billions and billions of dollars on intelligence. Why didn't we uh. have more intelligence? That's another thing that you can get to the bottom of it. Uh, Peter King, who was on your show earlier, mm -hmm. was chairman of the Intelligence Committee, would be a perfect member to have on this committee. Uh, I don't know who the members are going to be, but you need someone who knows what the intelligence is and why we're not getting our money's worth. You know, uh, we at Fox have taken some ribbing from our counterparts and other mainstream media, especially in the last few days, because we have been on the story from the beginning, and now the wider media are starting to ask questions and say, well, you know, I guess Fox was, well, maybe, you know, they were right to ask on behalf of the American people and to actually do our jobs. Katie Hughes says on Twitter, uh, dude, what planet are you from? Because Tommy Veter said to Brett Baer, dude, it's yeah. been two years. Move on, basically. Well, it, you know, it was a long time. I, my first experience in Washington was in part of the Nixon administration. Richard Nixon didn't conduct the, the, the burglary, but he certainly was involved and created a tone and was involved in the cover-up. And my sense today is I'm not, I'm not blaming the president, I'm not saying there's going to be an indictment, but political people in this White House, and there's way too many of them, uh, basically are always thinking about campaigns, and that clearly was what they were doing here. And this was in the middle of a campaign, after all. Mm. This was a month, month and a half before the election, and I think Pat is right. The National Security Advisor, certainly his deputy, wanted to insulate the president from blame. They chose that approach rather than being more candid. You know, it's interesting, and I know our viewers know this because they watch Political Insiders, and they know at least two of them on most nights are Democrats. So when right. they hear you, Doug Schoen, say that, does this make you pessimistic about where we are with, with our Washington leaders in general? And, and you sound like you're not too happy with your own party. Well, I'm not too happy with my own party, but I speak first and foremost as an American rather than a partisan. I think that's very important. And when you look at the tragedy unfolding slowly, but I dare say inexorably in eastern Ukraine uh, and the problems around the world, I think most right-thinking Americans worry that our country is suffering, not improving its position in the world. You know, I hadn't planned to talk about this, but Pat, I, I, if you'll give me one quick second, something mm -hmm. has come up on Twitter, and I want to share this with people. Uh, at Top Libertarian writes, could the political insiders please do on a portion of show lobbying and campaign financing? No one gets it. I want to shift with a couple of minutes that we have to talk about where we are with that issue because it comes from the audience. Where are we? Well, we have well, spoken well, uh, a great deal about it. Pat will weigh in in a second. Uh, I think it's very clear that the role of big contributors, 
the role of lobbyists is so disproportionate that the average American is, is disenfranchised and the system has become rigged and corrupt. We've, well, all, and we've all run campaigns. Yeah, look, and and look, the truth look, of the matter look. is we have way too much money for campaigns today. The public financing, I ran Reagan's campaign. We had $40 million, as did Mondale. We ran a nationwide campaign, won 49 states. We had television in every single state, a campaign in every single state. The president and Romney spent over a billion dollars on each side to run an eight-state campaign. Congressional races now are, are gigantic. It used to be what you ran a presidential campaign for. It's all paid for by lobbyists and by the fact that we no longer have finance restrictions on campaigns. So, Pat, do, do Democrats and Republicans see it that differently? I, I think what the viewer is asking is a lot's being made of financing. What do they need to know? Well, I think we need to understand and go back to the first question because it relates to it. We have in Washington an atmosphere of both parties in which everyone, and I did a poll on this, by over two to one, Americans believe that lying, the government and people in Washington lie about everything all the time, big or small, and it is endangering our democracy, and that's true. So are the lobbyists who are rigging the rules. 90% of Americans believe the rules and this process is rigged against them, and it is. And the point is, what we see in the Benghazi thing is illustrative of this. No sense of duty to the country and to the truth. I have said since day one this thing will never go away till you get to the bottom of it. Four people died. And the truth is, the American people are being disturbed by a political class of both parties who put politics and political ambition ahead of the United States and, it, and its safety and its future. And that is the bottom line. And it's all about money and about power. Doug? Oh, Pat is absolutely right. With unregulated super PACs, uh, donations bundled by lobbyists and big donors, the ordinary voter does not really have the say or influence that he or she had. Uh, it's just a fact. You know, Ed, I'm curious because everybody has to raise money to run. Like, it, it's not for free. So I hear Democrats pushing against sometimes Republicans like they're the only ones who are doing yeah. this. The president was the first one to basically say, I'm not going to take the public finance money in a presidential race. He went out and raised an enormous sum of money when he ran the first time. He sort of opened the gates, and now everybody's out there. The court has basically said there are no limits anymore. The bottom line, it, you're allowed in a federal campaign to give $2,600. I give $2,600, which is a lot of money to me or to you. Uh, I want good government. Someone gives $10 million or $5 million or $100,000. They want more than that. They want some access to something. They want some specific line in a bill. Nobody Pay, plays at that level without wanting something in return. Interesting. And, and you know what? It's yeah. getting worse, yeah. Harris, not better. So you don't see this as necessarily a partisan thing? No, it isn't partisan. I think Pat and Ed both make the same point that the American people are the loser, the political class, Democrat and, and, and Republican alike, are the winners. All right. Well, this is very timely, given what's happening between Russia and Ukraine right now. And Russia saying that it looks like, or rather Ukraine saying it looks like Russia's about to go to war with them today. Just today, that from the prime minister. The Obama administration has faced sharp criticism recently for what some people are saying is a lesser role on the world stage. But new research shows more Americans out there feel the U.S. should disengage from certain affairs of other countries. Our political insiders are back. Pat Cadell via satellite tonight. Doug Schoen and Ed Rollins is here. I want to get a quick tweet sure. in, please. Magnus Campos says, the U.S. needs to worry more about the U.S. and solve our own health care before we start worrying about other countries' problems. Uh, an interesting perspective. I'll pop some numbers up, but first blush, your response. Yeah. A large percentage of the American people do feel as that tweet from Magnus suggested. There is a but though, and the but is, there has not been an assertion of America's role in the world, our values, and the enduring importance of our leadership to animate public opinion. In the absence of it, given the failings of the Obama administration, mm. it's natural people might feel that way. That's interesting, Pat. Yeah, well, I, I believe this has been going on for some time, in part, when you see the way the Bush administration mishandled the war in Iraq and, uh, uh, and then with the ongoing 10-year conflict in Afghanistan, Americans are naturally tired of this. Yet at the same time, the American views on foreign policy are very complex and you can't simply put them in that one question. Uh, that same poll showed that 55% of Americans believe that we should assert our values, I believe, mm -hmm. rather than uh, the question of negotiating all the time with everyone. Americans are concerned to the extent, as Doug said, that someone makes a case. The Republican Party deserted foreign policy and foreign affairs after George right. Bush. Obama has too. 
All right, let's let's look at that poll, please. Uh, let's pop that up if we can. Americans saying, and this is really the first time we've seen a plurality on this. This is from Wall Street Journal and NBC poll says 47 percent of Americans feel that we should become less active. Ed Rollins, I'm curious. I, I hear uh, Pat Cadell pointing out the Bush administration, which I haven't heard him say that in a while. But what we're looking at are red lines that weren't carried out by the current administration. A lot of things out there where people are criticizing where the Obama has, administration has maybe not shown us fully what its foreign policy is. Well, I think historically there's always been a consistency, whether you're Democrat or Republican in foreign policy. There isn't one now. And I also think there's a tremendous fatigue among the American public after 13 years of wars. We now have a military that basically is, is almost a dis patched from the American society because it's a great military, but it's a volunteer. It's not kids like it was in Vietnam and what have you that everybody knows in the neighborhood. And our military is strained and broken. And I think to a certain extent, we're also basically handicapped by our finances. Uh, we're, we're, we have a very big shortfall in our, in our trillion dollars, almost trillion dollars a year. We can't be the policeman everywhere. We can preach and we can try and basically advocate democracy, but we certainly can't impose it. Fox News political insiders are back, and Doug Schoen said right before the commercial that I asked the key question. If Americans were looking at right. different, stronger leadership with regard to different crises, like Syria and Russia now with Ukraine, would that poll, which says that they'd like to see America disengage more, be different? Uh, I'm certain it would. Um, the American people want results. So far, they've not seen results in Syria, in Ukraine. And when they don't get results, they say, back off, let's not put ourselves at risk. But if we had a leader like Ronald Reagan, whether you agree with him or not, he was a leader who asserted American values and produced results. That's what we need on the international stage. It's what we lack, sadly. Ed? Uh, no one's afraid of us anymore. And I think to a certain extent, we don't have the allies. A lot of these things should be Europeans that should be doing these things and not us taking the lead on them. We should basically be supporting them. But right, right today, we don't have the allies. Our, the, the Germans are Why undercutting not? us. Germans are undercutting us. They have business well, interests. Well, we spied on them, you know. Uh, they, well, but more important than <laughs> That's that. That's problematic more, more when you listen to somebody's that, cell phone. They have business interest. And their That's big business right. leaders stepped up and said, Mr. Merkel, you do whatever you want to do, but we don't want tougher sanctions. Mm. Putin knows what's going on, and he basically he's won, the, he's won this battle for the short run. Interesting, because he and Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Germany, were talking today about gas, and they were having that economic-type situation, or conversation, rather. Pat? Yeah, well, when, look, when America doesn't lead, and I'm sorry, the Europeans will never lead anything. They couldn't get out of a wet paper bag together. Uh, if we Ouch. don't lead, then nothing will happen. And the European allies will all splinter. Everyone looks at us. He says, Doug said, as, uh, be, or as uh, both Doug and Ed said, being weak. When you're weak, you, people don't want to follow you. They don't take you seriously. And the problem is that that makes things more dangerous. Look what's happened in Libya. Libya, which we don't talk about, is turned over from Gaddafi to mm -hmm. apparently about to become an al-Qaeda state on top of that in Benghazi. What a disaster, because this leading from behind doesn't work. Neither does massive intervention everywhere with George Bush's policy under the neocons doesn't work either. You have to be strong and you have to be uh, you have to be discerning with what you do, but you cannot be like this administration is. And the, the truth of that is found in the polls, which show the Washington Post showed less than a third of Americans give a, a, give a positive rating to Obama on handling a, a Ukraine. Pat Cadell, Ed Rollins, you. Doug Schoen. Thank Gentlemen, you. you speak your minds. Pleasure to be with you. And Thank we you. read some tweets here. We're glad people played along with our discussion tonight. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Good. By the way, you can continue Great. the conversation with the political insiders on Twitter at FN Insiders. They tweet for a while. You guys never go to bed. No. And by the way, our website every Monday morning has them 1030 a.m. Eastern at live.foxnews.com. You can watch their program. Mm -hmm.